YouTube, so I'll be making an overview of Dr. Java and what Dr. Java does inside um, Mac OS X. So this is the Mac OS X variant of Dr. Java programming environment for Java, as it sounds like. So here we are going to be loading Dr. Java. So here it is, Dr. Java. This is the interface. You can go into um, Edit and Preferences, and here you can change more regarding the actual IDE. So starting off, all of your different classes will be on the left-hand side over here. And you can switch and toggle between selecting them. So if you have more classes, you simply go here. And here you have the ability to close the different files, print, compile, whatever you want to do with your thing. You can also preview a Java doc of the actual file. And yeah, so essentially you just type in your code here. So say public class hello world. Okay, and public hello world. Class constructor, and then yeah, so uh, like usual, it underlines everything. And then the curly brackets have a cool function where you can see exactly um, where it underlines. So in case you missed one, you can quickly tell where it is. You can select all with Control A and Tab, and it'll automatically indent. So see, mine's here. It indents automatically, which is a very nice feature, and it's very fast. So this is basically how it works. And then you press Compile, it compiles, and then you press Run. And then over here, you actually will have the interactions pane over here. And here you can have like a console. So um, here you can actually do interact with your program however you want. So for example I can do snow to print line fifty three and outputs fifty three. Let's see if I can do system delta print line high. And then outputs thirty two. So this is just a quick interactions pane and inside here you can do your classes. And then inside over here you have the console where you're actually dealing with the literal program. So the advantage of Docker Java is that it's a fairly simple interface and you can manage multiple classes on the left hand side. In terms of tools, you can compile all the documents and you also have the ability for Java docking. So whenever you're Java docking, it creates an HTML document with all the variables and everything. And then you do your regular thing such as this is a class constructor with a normal Java doc. And then you do at auth or whatever. And then you generate Java doc wherever you want. And then afterwards, you have an HTML file. Now, a bug within the PC platform is that when you close Dr. Java, it'll actually delete the, the, Dr. the Java doc folder. This doesn't happen inside the actual Dr. Java. Also, this version of Dr. Java is not Retina optimized. I can tell my Retina MacBook Pro that it's not Retina optimized. So that's just a little concern. So going more into preferences, you can add custom, custom, um, uh, custom jar files. You can change the fonts and colors, key bindings, compiler options. So this is for compilation. This is the interactions pane. So you can change the history size. This is the debugger. So source paths, packages, JUnit. Here's the option for Javadoc. So the version of Javadoc. Is there for notifications, and then there's file paths and JVMs. So yeah, you have various tools. You can generate Javadoc instances. You can also manage external processes, view the history, and inside here you have different um, debug modes with breakpoints and that sort of things. And then you have the option to change between full Java and functional Java. So this was a quick preview of Dr. Java. Dr. Java is a programming IDE. It shows here how much memory it uses. It can expand to 123 megabytes. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And please subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.